Hello, everybody, and welcome to this, the final lesson in Listening and Learning 7, the history of the Earth. This is about dinosaurs. Now, we already started a um, little on dinosaurs today with that thing that you saw on YouTube. And this, first you have to understand a word, and it's extinct. Not instinct, but extinct, E-X extinct. It means it does not exist anymore. It cannot be found living anywhere. Um, like you might find the, an animal that you rarely, rarely see, like maybe, um, I don't know, a bald eagle, let's say. Well, they're not extinct because you can still see them. Now, extinct means it's lost and gone forever with no chance of bringing it back. Uh, like the passenger pigeon, like the dinosaur, like the, uh, the heath hen, like the Carolina parakeet. So anyway, um, uh, let me get to our reading if I can get there. I'm using my Kindle to read this, which is not all that easy, trust me. Um... Hold on. There we are. Oh. Hello there, fellow scientists. I'm Pam the paleontologist again. Last time I was here, I gave you a whirlwind tour of the history of life on Earth right up through the time of the Dimetrodons, the first giant reptiles that had big tails on their backs. The time the Dimetrodons lived was followed by a time known as the Age of Reptiles. This era, according to some scientists, began about 245 million years ago. That's a really, really long time. A long time before humans existed. Dinosaurs and humans never lived on the Earth together. All right. Now, whoops. It switched on me. What do you know? No, I cannot. I can't do that. Let's see. Oh, hold on. Yep. Don't ever read from a Kindle if you have to read a whole story. Okay. This is the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-Rex as some people call it. It was one of the largest and most fearsome predators ever to walk the earth. A predator is an animal that eats other animals. We can tell by its teeth that the T-Rex was a meat eater. We also know that it was over 40 feet long and up to 20 feet tall. To give you an idea how long 40 feet is, in our classroom from, one, from the front of the classroom to the back of the classroom is 30 feet. So you'd have to go a uh, little ways into Mrs. Um, Mrs. Malone's classroom with the tail at the back of our classroom. So from the back of our classroom to partway through Mrs. Malone's classroom, that's 30 feet. That's a big animal. Whew. Yep, judging by the size of its bones, it weighed about seven tons, or more than two average-sized cars. How about that? Yeah, well, that was, uh, you know, they, they didn't believe in dieting back then. Okay, and our next. This is uh, T-Rex and my old friend Triceratops. I always like Triceratops. How are these two dinosaurs alike and how are they different? Hmm. Well, one has uh, long horns and a shield-like plate on his head. Here the word plate means a hard, flat piece that covers the bodies of some animals, not like the kind of plate you use at dinner time. And uh, keep in mind when you look at artwork like this that nobody today really, really knows what dinosaurs looked like. We've only seen their bones. Artists use information supplied by scientists today to make good guesses about what dinosaurs looked like when they were alive. Scientists do all this based on dinosaur bones. Many people think of dinosaurs as giant reptiles, and in fact the word dinosaur means terrifying lizard. However, many paleontologists now believe 
that dinosaurs are more closely related to birds than they are to lizards. Whatever the case may be, there are no dinosaurs on Earth anymore. They have all been extinct, dead and gone, for many, many years. Now there are just the fossilized bones of dinosaurs buried in the Earth's crust. Yeah. And here is my personal favorite, the Stegosaurus. Oh, this was, uh, I don't know, for all, all the little plates on its back there. The Stegosaurus, like the Triceratops, was a herbivore, a plant eater, but it had some pretty good ways of defending itself against meat eaters. Stegosaurus had hard, sharp plates on its back, which would have made it difficult to bite. But just in case anyone tried, the Stegosaurus also had a spiky tail that could really do some damage. How do we find and learn about these incredible animals? Well, some scientists believe that dinosaurs ruled the Earth for more than a hundred million years. And their fossilized bones can be found in many parts of the world, including the United States. If something is fossilized, by the way, that means over a long period of time it came to be like a fossil, to fossilize. So, dinosaur fossils are hard to find, and excavating, or digging up, their bones is not as easy as you might think. Once paleontologists find an area that is likely to have dinosaur bones, we move in with our tools and begin careful excavation, digging up. Paleontologists must use sharp little knives and small brushes to gradually scrape away the sedimentary rock surrounding the fossils. It will take this paleontologist days and maybe even weeks to excavate this one bone. It's slow work, but to me, there's nothing more exciting in the world than carefully uncovering a bone that may have been buried in rock for a hundred million years. Imagine that. This is a large excavation. Here a paleontologist is excavating a large collection of bones from the sandstone cliffs of Dinosaur National Monument, an area located in the states of Colorado and Utah, where we have uncovered hundreds and thousands of dinosaur bones. Can you see all the bones in this picture? That was one big dinosaur. But what did it really look like? It's hard to tell, because over time, the bones have moved around and become broken. As a paleontologist, I sometimes feel like I spend half my life putting puzzles together. Often we only find a few bones. The rest of the skeleton was long since destroyed or perhaps even dragged away by a predator many, many years ago. Other times, lots of different dinosaur bones can be mixed in together. We paleontologists have to use our detective skills to figure out which bones belong to which type of dinosaur. In fact, those bones belonged to a mighty Camarasaurus. As soon as I saw its head, I knew it. This plant eater was 60 feet long and weighed about 20 tons, a real whopper. A ton is 2,000 pounds, by the way. That means a dinosaur weighed about as much, this one weighed about as much as 10 cars when it was alive. That's one big dinosaur. Here's the Camarasaurus. Here's one ar artist's idea of what they looked like. It could use its long tail to fend off predators. Good thing you don't have to worry about these things anymore. Not all dinosaurs were huge. In fact, some were really small. Take the Compsognathus. This little critter stood just two feet tall, two feet tall, and scurried around on two little bird-like eggs. How long is a foot? Well, put, uh, bend your elbow and make a fist, and take your other arm and bend your elbow and make a fist, 
and that's about and put it on top of the other one there you got about two feet a little bit more than two feet but that's about um that's how big this thing was it scurried around on two little bird-like legs a compsognathus was a meat eater that fed on little lizards we know this because paleontologists found parts of a fossilized lizard in the stomach of a compsognathus fossil how about that they were able to open the fossilized stomach of compsognathus from 150 million years ago and open it up and find the fossilized remains of what it ate i think that's amazing now the next one is going to be very familiar tyrannosaurus rex skeleton well what happened to the dinosaurs you can't go and see a live T-Rex today at the zoo because they are extinct. Remember, extinct means there are no more left. Some scientists believe dinosaurs all died out about 65 million years ago. According to fossil records, the extinction of the dinosaurs was quite sudden. It means it happened just like that. Why? That's something paleontologists have been trying to answer ever since the first dinosaur bones were discovered and identified nearly 200 years ago. For many years, many scientists believe that extraordinary geologic events like supervolcanoes must have had something to do with it. These days, however, many scientists believe that the dinosaur extinction was caused by a giant meteorite from outer space, a meteorite, remember, is a piece of rock that falls from space to the Earth's surface without burning up. There are billions of meteors, or burning chunks of debris, in outer space. Some meteors are quite large, but most are tiny, between the size of a sand grain and a baseball. Meteors are whizzing around all over the place in outer space, and occasionally a meteor crashes toward Earth. When this happens, the meteor hits the atmosphere at an incredible speed and usually burns up as it enters the uppermost parts of Earth's atmosphere. Remember in astronomy we learned about um, meteors that create a streak of light in the night sky and some people call them shooting stars. Yeah. Occasionally bits and pieces of meteors survive their trip through the atmosphere and actually fall to Earth. This is very rare. But it does happen from time to time, and it is possible to find pieces of them on the ground. When part of a meteor survives the trip through the atmosphere and lands on Earth, the meteor becomes a meteorite, or a space rock, that has landed on Earth. And uh, here's a picture of one. Let's go back to dinosaur extinction. Some scientists think that the dinosaur extinction was caused by a giant meteorite from outer space. When the meteorite struck the Earth, it sent massive plumes, or clouds of debris, up into the atmosphere. That means it sent enormous bits and pieces of objects from the Earth up in... Think of the way a volcano is, blowing smoke and debris up into the air. Now imagine if something hit the Earth and boom, all that stuff would go up in the air. It would have blocked out the light and the energy of the sun causing many of the Earth's uh, animals and much of the Earth's plant life to die and severely lowering the temperature. Most creatures at the time would have been unable to change, to adapt, and they would have died out before the skies had a chance to clear. <clears throat> Whether this is true or not remains to be seen though geologists have discovered at least one very large crater that was caused by a meteorite impact about the time the dinosaurs became extinct. Whatever the case, we know that dinosaurs became extinct, making way for new kinds of life on Earth. I, for one, will continue to study the Earth's fossil record, and I'm sure we'll find the answer someday, because the clues about the history of the Earth are all there in the rocks. Remember, my friend Jerry the Geologist... He will tell you the same thing if you ask. Well, now what does it mean when someone says dinosaurs have gone extinct? 
Mm -hmm. Means that there aren't any anymore. Now, here's something I want to go through with you. Um, at the end of our unit. Can you guess what the word is for all three pictures? Yeah, it's a stick. These are sticks. Here she's getting, someone wants to stick her with a needle, and here the Band-Aid sticks. How about that? Three different meanings, one word. Or the next one, look at this. What do you think this is? You know what this is, right? Change. And colors change as he's going down into the earth. Uh-huh. How about this? You know what this is. And what's happened to this boat? Here's a sink. And somebody was looking at this boat and said, Watch out, it's going to sink! <laughs> How about this? This is a plate. These are plates. Now, they don't look the same, and I hope you don't eat off the parts of a stegosaurus when you have dinner. But uh, the multiple meaning words, that's what they, they're spelled the same, they sound the same, but they mean different things. You, you eat off a plate, but that's not what a stegosaurus has on its back, not a kitchen plate. It has stegosaurus plates. And that's it, boys and girls. We are ready for a test. Ha! The first one in remote learning history. Okay, we'll be talking more about this. Make sure you give uh, all your full attention if you want to listen to it again. It probably we would be good to listen one more time. And what's that word we were talking about? Extinct. Extinct. That's right. It starts with E-X. Okay. <laughs>